All right, USFL week number six. We got a packed weekend here, so I want y'all to stick around all weekend long of USFL week six preview, a little bit of XFL at the end here. So we're just going to dive right in. Saturday, Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, Tampa Bay and Philadelphia are two teams kind of in that middle tier right now. You know, they're in a weird place. Both of them are in their respective divisions right now. Uh, we're going to need, for Tampa Bay, we're going to need the Jordan Tomu, the John Franklin connection, keep that going. And there's also Josh Banderas for the Stars. Of course, you know, Case Cook is now the starter for the Stars and everything like that. And, I mean, things things are, you know, looking interesting. This game is definitely going to be really interesting. Tampa Bay, this is the only game where it's a less than a touchdown. Um, the favorites, you know, in this game is Tampa Bay. The over-under here is the highest of the four that I've found. Uh, and these, these are the best odds that I can find. The over under here for this game is probably 40. It might be over. It might be a little bit over. might be a little bit under. Uh, if I were a betting man, I'd take Tampa Bay in this game. That, that's the first thing. Uh, you know, I think the Stars, you know, I, they, they're finding their place, you know, but it, it's just not enough, you know. When you have Tampa Bay, you know, they're, the way that Tampa Bay can do things, you know, like Tampa Bay's finally trying to wake up for being that team that, you know, didn't have all that, you know, rather, the team that had the expectations that we all expected coming into the season. Uh, Philadelphia, I think, needs to continue to improve with Case Cook is as they are right now. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna win this game. I think this will be. I think all of these games will be very, very tight. You know, just as how the USFL has been this year, it's been a very tight slate of games all season long. And then the nightcap in between uh, the horse racing. I don't care which of the Preakness Stakes or whatever it's called. I don't care which of these horse races are because I've never liked horse racing. Uh, we got Michigan Birmingham as the nightcap. Keep in mind that I believe three of these four, three of the four games are on broadcast networks. I believe these two, specifically on Saturday, will be lead-ins and lead-outs to one of the uh, one of these horse race, one of the big horse racing events. I forgot what it's called uh, already. I, can, I, I, I probably got it wrong. Uh, but Michigan Birmingham will be the nightcap. Birmingham is favored by seven. The over under thirty seven and a half. And Shea Patterson, Reggie Corbin, you know, this is a duo, I think. Can they can they stop Birmingham? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, you got DeMarquise Gates swarming around. You got Jamar Smith, C.J. Marable for the Stallions, you know, doing their thing, being a difference-making duo out on the field. And I, I honestly, I take Birmingham in this game. I, I don't know if Michigan has it. Uh, at the end of the day, I think if... If Michigan can generate more offense like they did, you know, with Shea Patterson last week picking up 300 yards by itself, I think that will help them out immensely. But I don't think they're going to beat Birmingham, unfortunately, in this game. And then Sunday, you got Pittsburgh, New Orleans, where New Orleans is saved by 7.5. The over under here, 35.5. And, and I'm wondering if badly can keep this type of momentum up. You got EJ and Gia on the defensive side of the ball making plays. You got Bailey Gaither also on the offensive side helping Bad Lee out. So Pittsburgh, after picking up their first win last week, I think this team can play uh, because you got you got a you got an interesting conundrum here with New Orleans. You, you know you got Kyle Sloter, Jonathan Adams, Jordan Ellis. You know this crew wasn't you know. The most efficient last week. They weren't the most. They weren't the most adept out there. You know, there were times where I was questioning. You know, what kind of game was was I watching? You know, because this this is this is the New Orleans Breakers offense that we know. Uh, but I, I I I'd be comfortable taking New Orleans. I don't think it'll be by seven and a half. I think this game will be a lot closer than that. Uh, and then the last game of the day, Houston, New Jersey. Darius Victor, Cavante Turpin, you know, you know, this general's offense is playing well. And I mean they, there's just no denying what they could do. You know, you got DeAndre Johnson, you know, out here doing what he does best. 
you know, just being the running and passing type guy that he could do. And, you know, Houston, I mean, it's just been heartbreak after heartbreak for them. You know, I, I don't think I've even realized that Houston's blown so many leads. You know, they're going to need more from the Gamblers' defense, playing it simple in this game. Just need more from the Gamblers' defense. Uh, you're going to need more from Mark Thompson, too. I, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if Clayton Thorson and whoever the other quarterback is. I forgot who the other quarterback is on the roster. So I know there's some roster changes over the past few days. I haven't really paid too much attention to them. Uh, but Houston's going to need a lot more for their defense. They're going to need a lot more to help them out. And if that doesn't happen, they might get steamrolled by New Jersey. But the big news, the big news aside from the USFL making it halfway through this season is the XFL announcing their five-year television deal with ESPN FX, that's right, FX, which is owned by Disney and ABC with the season beginning February 18th, 2023, six days after Super Bowl 57. And then there's also the fact that Houston's TD ECU Stadium and St. Louis's The Dome and America Center will be hosting games. They'll be hosting, you know, five game, five home games for each of those teams. So both, both of the teams have pretty much been confirmed. We just don't know, you know, everything yet. You know, we don't know how everything's going to shake out. Whatever, you know, um, Danny Garcia and the Rock and crew and, you know, you know the uh, the XFL guys, who, whoever I forgot what the I forgot the actual company, but the XFL guys, the big guys at the front of the XFL, you know, whenever they're gonna announce things and get things out, you know, because uh, you know we, we kind of know everything now, but we just need to know, you know, schedules, who these who these other three teams are, the uh, the San Antonio, the uh, the Las Vegas, the Orlando teams are, what what are their names going to be? And I guess, you know, maybe getting, you know, getting like Dallas, Dallas needs an updated arena, or rather, uh, an updated stadium. I don't think that ballpark is really suitable for, well, I'm sorry, that, that the Globe Life Park or whatever, that, that the baseball park that got converted into a football stadium, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Please, let, let's not. Can, can we go to, the, can we go to, the, can we go to the star at Frisco, please, please? I'd I, I take that in a heartbeat. Uh, but in any case, I think the XFL, you know, has a leg up here. Um, you know, there was, I don't think there was anything about ESPN Plus in this release from a couple days ago. And that is a good thing because there's been a couple of Peacock games for the USFL, which is not ideal. Not ideal, especially when you have Fox being extremely inconsistent with their own, you know, sports weekends, you know. So, uh, there's, there's definitely some things here where I think, you know, something's wrong. Something's completely wrong here, you know, for the USFL because, I mean, they're, you don't just change rules mid-season. I'm sorry, you just don't do that. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is it's supposed to be a USFL positive video, but, I mean, we got to talk a little bit negative here. And then, you know, the XFL, you know, having some things have been confirmed already. We don't know everything again. That's a negative for them. Uh, but the cards are in place for both these leagues to coexist. Can they coexist? I don't know because people are already bickering and, you know, whining and complaining and bitching and moaning on Twitter about it and all sorts of other social medias. So I don't know how things are going to go, you know, going forward. But in any case, that's what I've got. I'll see you all 11.30-ish. I hope it'll be 11.30-ish tomorrow night. It might be. Yeah, it'll be 11.30-ish tomorrow for this weekend indoor football. So we'll get that out. And then USFL Week 6 recap will be about 6 o'clock, 6.30 on Sunday. So keep, you know, keep with me. Um sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, ignore my hair. I'm going to get a haircut eventually at some point. Um, and I'll see you all tomorrow night. Take care. See you after indoor football tomorrow.